Hello chemistry students, Dr. Tellis here. We are about to start chapter 11, which is all about gases and gas laws. Here we go. In this chapter, the career that we are looking at is a respiratory therapist. They treat premature infants whose lungs have not yet developed, asthmatics, and patients with emphysema or cystic fibrosis. They test breathing capacity and oxygen and carbon dioxide levels in patients' blood, and they provide aerosol medications. I actually was in the hospital not too long ago after a terrible accident, and I had punctured a hole in my lung and worked with a respiratory therapist. They did an excellent job of monitoring my oxygen and CO2 levels. They also helped monitor my nemo and hemothorax, which is when there's air or blood that accumulate in your pleural space near your lungs. They were fantastic at helping me get back to breathing normally and making sure that I did not need to get a chest tube. So very rewarding career. In section one, we are looking at properties of gases. You will be able to describe the kinetic molecular theory of gases and the units of measurement used for gases. Ozone, O3, formed in the upper atmosphere by the interaction of oxygen with UV light, absorbs some of the harmful radiation before it can strike Earth's surface. Carbon dioxide gas, a product of combustion and metabolism, is used by plants in photosynthesis, which produces the oxygen that is essential for humans and animals. We are surrounded by gases, such as elements that exist as a gas at room temperature, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, and all the noble gases. We have non-metal oxides like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and sulfur trioxide. And we have low molecular weight hydrocarbons like methane, ethane, propane, butane. The behavior of gases is quite different from that of liquids and solids. The particles in a gas are much further apart than particles in a liquid or a solid. Gases have no definite shape or volume and will completely fill any container. Gases are less dense than solids or liquids and are easy to compress. A model for the behavior of a gas called the kinetic molecular theory of gases helps us understand gas behavior. It says the following. A gas consists of small particles, atoms or molecules, that move randomly with high velocities. Gas molecules moving in random directions at high speeds cause a gas to fill the entire volume of a container. Number two, the attractive forces between the particles of a gas are usually very small. Gas particles are far apart. Fill a container of any size and shape. Number three, the actual volume occupied by gas molecules is extremely small compared to the volume that the gas occupies. The volume of the gas is considered equal to the volume of the container that it's in. Most of the volume of a gas is empty space, which allows gases to be easily compressed. Number four, gas particles are in constant motion, moving rapidly in straight paths. When gas particles collide, they rebound and travel in new directions. Every time they hit the walls of the container, they exert pressure. Think of that. Every time that a gas particle hits the wall, it's like punching the wall. Bang, bang, bang. That exerts pressure. An increase in the number or force of collisions against the walls of the container causes an increase in the pressure of the gas. And number five, the average kinetic energy of gas molecules is proportional to the Kelvin temperature. Gas particles move faster as temperature increases, and at higher temperatures, the gas particles hit the walls of the container more often and with more force, producing higher pressures. Like we just said, gas particles are extremely small and move rapidly. When gas particles strike the walls of their container, they exert pressure, which we will refer to with the symbol P. If the gas is heated, the molecules move faster and strike the walls of the containers more often with increased force, which increases the pressure. The most common units used to measure gas pressure are the atmosphere, which we abbreviate as ATM, and millimeters of mercury, which we shorthand as MMHG for millimeters, and mercury's symbol is HG, MMHG. On a TV weather report, the atmospheric pressure may be reported in inches of mercury or in kilopascals in countries other than the United States. In a hospital, the unit TOR, or pounds per square inch, PSIs, may be used. 
It's just like if we were to measure the length of something, it could be in inches, centimeters, millimeters, kilometers. There are lots of different units to express length, just like there are pressure. Atmospheric pressure is the pressure exerted by a column of air from the top of the atmosphere to the surface of the earth. Atmospheric pressure is about one atmosphere or a little less at sea level. The volume of a gas equals the size of the container in which the gas is placed. In a container with a flexible volume, if you add more particles, it increases the volume. If you lower the temperature of the gas, it reduces the kinetic energy of the molecules, and that decreases the volume of space that they occupy. The most common units for volume measurements are liters and milliliters, and we refer to volume as the letter V. Temperature, T. The temperature of a gas is related to the kinetic energy of its particles and is measured in kelvins. For example, in a rigid container, heating the gas will increase the energy of the molecules and therefore increase the pressure of the gas inside the container if the volume of the gas does not change. The amount of gas, which we refer to as N, adding air to a bicycle tire increases the amount of gas in the tire, resulting in a higher pressure inside of the tire. Usually, the mass of a gas is measured in grams. In gas law calculations, we change grams to moles. So N tells us how many moles of gas we have. Here's putting into a table all of the properties that describe a gas. We've got pressure, volume, temperature, and amount in moles. Can you identify which property of a gas is described by each of the following? Hopefully you got temperature for increases the kinetic energy of gas particles. Pressure is the force of gas particles hitting the walls of the container. And the volume is the space occupied by a gas. When billions of gas particles collide with the walls of a container, they exert pressure, which is defined as force acting on a certain area. So pressure is equal to force divided by area. In SI units, pressure is measured in pascals. Atmospheric pressure can be measured using a barometer. At sea level, when the atmospheric pressure is equal to one atmosphere, we can measure in this tube from the very bottom of the tube to the top, minus that air bubble, it's 760 millimeters of mercury that has been sucked up into this tube. As air pressure increases or decreases, it can push this down or it can rise more, so it can be greater or less than, depending on where you're taking your measurements. We mentioned all the different units that we can measure pressure in. Therefore, if there's atmospheres or millimeters of mercury, tor, pascals, kilopascals, there needs to be a way to convert from one to the other. So there are a lot of equalities that you need to be able to recognize. One atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. One atmosphere is equal to 760 tor. 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to 760 tor. So we can say that one millimeter of mercury equals one tor. In SI units, we can also say that one atmosphere is equal to 101.325 pascals which is 101.325 kilopascals. We can also say that one atmosphere is equal to 29.9 inches of mercury, or 14.7 pounds per square inch. All of these are different units of pressure. Atmospheric pressure decreases as the altitude increases. Notice here at the top of the mountain that the pressure is 0.7 atmospheres, or 530 millimeters of mercury. And down here at sea level, the pressure is at one atmosphere, 760 millimeters of mercury. You can see the difference between Los Angeles and Mount Whitney. Here are several more locations to look at. The Dead Sea, which its altitude is negative 0.4 kilometers, so it's below sea level. We have LA, Las Vegas, Denver, Mount Everest. Take a look at those and see how those atmospheric pressures compare. Deep sea divers must be concerned about increasing pressures on their ears and lungs when they dive below the surface of the ocean. Because water is more dense than air, the pressure on a diver increases rapidly as the diver descends. At a depth of 33 feet below the surface of the ocean, an additional one atmosphere of pressure is exerted by the water on a diver, which gives a total pressure of two atmospheres. At 100 feet, there's a total pressure of four atmospheres. The regulator that a diver uses continuously 
Adjust the pressure of the breathing mixture to match the increase in pressure. Take a minute to look over the learning goals for section one.